What's going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from different comic book companies. Today, we're gonna jump back over to Marvel Comics and we're gonna pick up with Dark Avengers Volume 1. Now, this is the origin of the Dark Avengers team that was put together by Norman Osborn, AKA the Green Goblin. This book was written by Brian Michael Bendis, and this comes out of Secret Invasion, the big Marvel event back in, I wanna say, the year 2008, I could be wrong. But this book comes out of that event right there, where Norman Osborn has taken over S.H.I.E.L.D. and replaced it with his own organization called Hammer. So, if you do like today's comic book video, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So to start off this story, we pick up with Morgan Le Fay. I could sit here and give you a quick rundown on her origin, but that would take us forever. All you need to know is that she is a powerful witch of the dark arts who lives in the year 690 AD, around the same time as King Arthur, I think. But the reason why we start off with her is because she is plotting to go in the future and get revenge against Dr. Doom. The big question is, why would she want to do something like that? This leads us into the present day, where we see Norman Osborn show off his new Avengers team, as we call them the Dark Avengers. Remember that this comes after Secret Invasion, where the scrolls were able to secretly hide in Earth society and slowly take over the world. The original Avengers were able to save the day, but what the world saw was Norman Osborn saving the capital and also getting rid of the queen of the scrolls when the scrolls were trying to take over the world. Where of course, he played with the media to work himself into the position where he was able to get rid of S.H.I.E.L.D. and replace it with Hammer. Before he had introduced his new Avengers team, we see him take care of a few things. Where of course, he introduces Victoria Han, who becomes his personal assistant. Then finally, we see him meet up with Maria Hill, who was second in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. when Tony Stark was the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. We see Norman tell Maria that she is no longer needed. So he fires her and she leaves. But before she leaves, she tells Norman Osborn that one day he will fail and she'll be happy to see that happen. Then we see Norman Osborn going around and recruiting the different people for his Dark Avengers, starting with Bullseye, because Bullseye was with Norman Osborn when he was saving the capital. So Norman Osborn wants to reward Bullseye by stating that they're going to take over Avengers Tower. Once Norman Osborn gets to the Avengers Tower, you have Carol Danvers arriving at Avengers Tower. At this point, Carol Danvers was Miss Marvel, not Captain Marvel. Also, she was the leader of the Avengers, the one Tony Stark put together when he took over S.H.I.E.L.D. With Norman Osborn taking over S.H.I.E.L.D. and replacing it with Hammer, Norman is technically in charge over Carol Danvers since she is a military person. Also, Norman tells us that the Avenger Tower is also his now, since Tony used S.H.I.E.L.D. money to rebuild it, not his own money. So that let Norman Osborn move in easily. Norman even shows us that he was able to recruit both Ares, the god of war, and the sentry. And so you have Carol Danvers leave because she knows she does not stand a chance against these two characters. After that, we see Norman Osborn go to recruit Carla Sofen, or Sofen. I know I just butcher her name. 
who is currently Moonstone. She was a character that was introduced back in Captain America number 192. Her powers comes from the Moonstone, a Kree device, which makes her partially Kree, but still mostly human. She actually stole the Moonstone from Lloyd Bloch, and I know I just butchered his name as well, who was the last Moonstone. You have Norman Osborn come and recruit her because she can easily be the new Miss Marvel for the Dark Avengers team. She is basically an evil version of Miss Marvel, so it works out perfectly. She is also going to be the leader of the team in the field after Norman. Then we jump over to some hammer agents throwing a scroll from the scroll invasion into some kind of lock room, where we find out that inside the lock room, it is actually Venom. Let me tell you, this is not Eddie Brock nor Flash Thompson Venom. This is Matt Gargan, who was originally the Scorpion, but later on became Venom when he received the Venom suit. Except Matt Gargan is the pure evil version of Venom, where Eddie Brock tiptoed over the borderline of being good and bad, Matt Gargan does not. He will eat people left and right to feed his hunger, but also he cannot control the Venom suit it seems. But after Matt Gargan had eaten that scroll, this leads into the moment you have Norman Osborn appear and show Matt Gargan a pill. This pill, of course, when Venom takes it, makes him look more like Spider-Man in the black suit. So he now has the Venom suit more under control, but also it is him joining the Avengers as Spider-Man. The next person he recruits is Dakin, the son of Wolverine, which is huge because Dakin was still a new character around this time in Marvel Comics. Also, Dakin hates his father, Wolverine, and he is a freaking killer. Dude goes around killing people for jobs, but he also enjoys killing. This is Norman Osborn asking Dakin to join the new Dark Avengers team that he is building. Let me say, I'm a huge fan of Dakin because how crazy he is, it is honestly kind of funny. The last person he goes around to recruit is Novar. Novar is a Kree soldier from an alternate Earth. He is a super Kree soldier, but this is him joining the Avengers team where Norman Osborn made Novar believe that Norman and his friends were good people when they were fighting in the secret invasion event. You have Norman ask Novar to be the new Captain Marvel to the team since he is technically a Kree, just a Kree from another Earth. So it still works for Norman Osborn. Finally, we see Norman Osborn talking to another villain named Ghost, who basically has the same powers as Kitty Pride from the X-Men, just his powers come through his tech suit, and he was an Iron Man villain for a long time. Sometimes Spider-Man too, but Norman Osborn asked Ghost to open up the door that was tightly locked up by Tony Stark. This is where we find out that behind the door was a bunch of Iron Man suits. With that door being open, you will have Norman Osborn take one to of course become the Iron Patriot. Let's not forget about Morgan Le Fay, who we saw in the beginning of this video planning to attack Doctor Doom. So we are now in the present day and we see Doctor Doom arrive where his castle used to be in Latveria. He is confronted by Morgan Le Fay, who begins to battle him in the middle of this field. Now we do learn that Morgan Le Fay did try to kill Doctor Doom when he was younger, when he was a kid. This is where we learn why she is mad at him. It is because when Victor became Doctor Doom, he went to her to learn dark magic, but he betrayed her trust. So with that being said, she has been looking through the timeline trying to find a way to kill Doctor Doom off to get her revenge. Now of course, she did not kill Doctor Doom when he was a child. 
she wants to fight him when he is at his full strength. So when we jump over to the present day, we see her fighting against Dr. Doom, and she is putting in some work. I mean, this is someone who trained Dr. Doom, so she's of course on his level when it comes to dark magic. Now for Dr. Doom, he only has a few members of Hammer Agents helping him out with this battle. But for Morgan Le Fay, she brought an army of demons to help her bring down Dr. Doom. It actually gets at that point where you have Dr. Doom is defeated by Morgan Le Fay and gets smashed up some more by one of her demons. Getting back to the Avengers, we see them having their first meeting in Avengers Tower, where of course, when you have a bunch of villains coming together pretending to be a new superhero team, you are bound to have some problems. Now I want you guys to keep this on your mind. Norvar, the Captain Marvel of this team, is technically the only person who is not a villain, so keep that in the back of your mind. Also, this team does get to meet Victoria Han, letting them know that she is the second in charge of the whole Hammer organization after Norman Osborn. She will be tasked to keep these guys in line. After their somewhat great meeting, you have Victoria Han tell Norman about what is happening with Doctor Doom and Morgan Le Fay. So you have the Avengers team head over there and Norman Osborn is nervous as heck because this is his team's first mission. They are going against someone who is a powerhouse and was able to beat down on Doctor Doom. That alone is a great thing to have under her belt. Now this leads into a pretty cool moment for the Sentry and Morgan Le Fay as well. You have Norman Osborn tell the Sentry to go in and just end this battle the best way he can. Now the best way for the Sentry or anyone to stop her you would think is just to kill her off. Well that is what the Sentry does. He goes down there and rips her whole head off clean, letting us think that she is dead. Where you have the Dark Avengers come back together thinking they have completed their mission. The day is saved and all they have to do now is check up on Doctor Doom. But then something begins to happen to the Sentry, where we see him beginning to freak out and then out of nowhere, he actually explodes, making it seem like now the Sentry is dead. This is huge for Marvel Comics because the Sentry was always this God level being. So to see Morgan Le Fay do that to the Sentry is freaking crazy. She quickly explains that with her not being part of this timeline, she can come back over and over again. Since none of these guys are trained in the dark magic, they have no idea on how to beat her. Where she begins to make her demons attack and actually takes over the Matt Gargan Venom suit, making him start attacking his own teammates where it seems like this could be the end of the Dark Avengers. We jump back to the past because we never truly talked about how Norman Osborn had recruited the Sentry. At this point, the Sentry had a home that was magically built on top of the Avengers Tower. Sentry was also someone who was scared to be out in the world using his powers because of the Void, this dark being that lives inside of him. If that being gets out, it would be the end of the universe. But you have Norman Osborn talking to the Sentry as if he understands what the Sentry is going through because Norman Osborn was the Green Goblin. Norman speaks about how the Green Goblin was like this evil being that lived inside of him, always trying to get out and wreak havoc. Except you have Norman Osborn talk about how he was able to get some help. With him getting help, it helps him realize that the Green Goblin was not real. And so he is telling the Sentry the same thing about the Void. The Void is not real. And that Sentry is able to live a normal life if he is able to keep that mindset. 
So you have Norman telling Sentry about the formation of his new Avengers team. And Norman wants the Sentry to join, where the Sentry does agree, but we see his wife, who was in the room pretending to sleep. She freaks out because she knows how dangerous her husband is. Also, we see Morgan Le Fay was also watching over the conversation as a way to learn more about the Sentry. So getting back to the present day, we see the Dark Avengers trying their best to handle Morgan Le Fay and her army of demonic creatures. Ares, who is the god of war, but the son of Zeus, he really thought his name meant something here. Because you have him trying to speak about who he was, thinking that it would make Morgan Le Fay scared of him but she just turns him into stone. Now Bullseye was able to shoot some arrows into Morgan Le Fay, which did kill her once again, except remember that she can come back anytime she wants to. So with her dying here again, it's only giving them a breathing moment for right now. Of course, that breathing moment is gone because here comes Morgan Le Fay getting ready to attack the Avengers once more. So you have Norman Osborn grab Doctor Doom, who can't move, and ask him what to do. Where Doctor Doom states that the only way for them to beat her is to go to her where she is in time and stop her there. Except they need a time machine. The only person who has that at the moment is Dr. Doom, except he can't move to use his time machine. So you have Norman ask Dr. Doom to let him access his tech so they can open a portal to let them time travel where she is at. At first, Dr. Doom does not want to because he is afraid that Norman would betray him down the road. But at this point, he really does not have a choice here. So you have Dr. Doom let Norman Osborn access his suit, which of course he goes into the time stream. That is when you have Morgan Le Fay realize that Dr. Doom and Norman Osborn are now missing from the battle in the present day. For her to find out that they are behind her now because they found her in the timeline and are getting ready to beat her here so they'll be able to be done with her finally. Now when I tell you this is one of the quickest battles I have seen in comics after a huge buildup, this one is a quick one because you have Morgan Le Fay and Doctor Doom actually battle in her castle in the past. The battle is not that long because this time Doctor Doom was ready for her. He knew what he had to do to beat her. So when she goes to attack him, he literally just takes her attack like it was nothing. Then gives us the famous Doctor Doom look that tells you and anyone else that you just literally messed up. And he does one simple spell and she is taken into her small witch cooking pot thing. I don't know what it's called, but she does get grabbed into that and she is gone. Norman Osborn thinks that she is dead, but she is not because Dr. Doom explains that he cannot kill her. If he had killed her, the timeline would be heavily changed because of how much of a role she plays in a lot of different things. So the only thing Dr. Doom did, and this is just to stop her for the moment, was to throw her deeper into the past about the time dinosaurs were on earth as we see her running away from a t-rex as that t-rex is chowing down on a caveman after taking care of things in the past you have dr doom and norman osborne return to the present day here you have them meeting up with the rest of the avengers Dr. Doom was able to restore Ares who was turned into stone earlier. Then they tell the Avengers that they were able to get rid of Morgan Le Fay and they can now leave. Now something I want to mention is that Norman Osborn and Dr. Doom are allies because before this book Norman Osborn formed the Cabal group a group he made to help them beat the Illuminati, but also so they can reach their goals. So he formed a cabal group. 
Either way though, Norman Osborn tells Doctor Doom that the world will not know about this since it will look bad for the Avengers to help a villain like Doctor Doom. But you have Norman Osborn mention that Doctor Doom actually owes him one now. Skipping back to the Avengers heading home, we see a couple of things happen here. The first is where we see Moonstone make a move on Norvar. She's just trying to get some you know what from him. After that, you have Victoria Hand contact Norman Osborn to inform him that Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, but at this time was going by the name Ronan, has gone on live television talking about how Norman Osborn is evil, how Norman Osborn had recruited a bunch of villains to pretend to be like the Avengers, saying how it is wrong. So you have Norman Osborn tell Victoria Hand to make a request for him to be interviewed by someone. After that, when the Avengers arrive back to their tower, they see that the Sentry is alive again. Now when the Avengers see that the Sentry is alive again, it really makes the Avengers wonder how in the world is that possible? This man exploded not too long ago, but this is showing how powerful he truly is. Now you have Norman Osborn try his best to talk to the Sentry because he wants to keep the Sentry calm and under his control. Also that Norman is afraid that if he doesn't, the Void, this powerful being, will come out and kill everyone in a second. And so you have Norman again making the Sentry think that there is only the Sentry there, there is no Void. He is able to complete his goal, but this again is showing Norman trying to control the Sentry for his own goals. We then see Norman Osborn go on live television and speak to the world about what Hawkeye said about Norman Osborn being a villain. Now, you have Norman talk about how Hawkeye used to be a villain before he joined the Avengers. When Hawkeye joined, he joined around the same time that Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch joined the team. And they were also villains. They were working for their father Magneto back then. It's Norman Osborn showing to the world that villains can change and be good people. It is not fair to judge someone about their past and doubt they could change. Then he speaks about how he was able to get some form of help to get rid of his Green Goblin persona. Now his interview is cut short because something is happening in LA. We learned that in LA people were just minding their business and having a good time. Except that is when we see a couple of people get hit by some form of blast. And that is when we find out some Atlanteans are attacking the city for some strange reason. This is why the Norman Osborn interview was cut short because of this. Where of course he calls up Victoria Hand to get the Avengers together so they can go and take care of this problem. Now. We are not going to see them take care of this problem, but they do take care of it just off panel. A couple things had happened before the attack on LA. We see that Ares went to his home, expecting to see his son. But of course, when he gets home, he finds out that his son is not at home. He also finds out that his son has been skipping school. There was a notice in his son's backpack. Which of course makes Ares upset that his son has been skipping school. The second thing we see before the Atlantis attack is that Norvar is able to get in the bed with Moonstone and they do the dirty. That is not the important part though. It comes at the end of their time together. When they are spending time together, you have Moonstone talk about the fact that Norman Osborn is evil and the people he had recruited all been evil. To Novar, he can't believe that he joined a team full of villains and makes him sick to his stomach. Some time has passed by and we see Norman Osborn calling a meeting with his cabal. So you have the Hood, Namor, Emma Frost, Loki, and Doctor Doom there. 
This meeting is more of Norman Osborn asking Namor to betray his people. At this point, the Atlantis Kingdom is in shambles. So sleeper agents of Atlantis are now attacking because they really don't have no one to answer to. Now Norman Osborn wants Namor to go and kill off these sleeper agents but one. So he can bring that one back to the states and have Namor announce to the world he was not down with the idea of attacking LA. Here's the problem. Namor does not want to do that. It is portraying his people for one, but also Namor only does things he wants to do. So you have Norman Osborn try to be a big boss to Namor and Namor just leaves and the meeting ends there. We then see Avengers meeting back up in the briefing room of Avengers Tower. This is more of Victoria Hand trying to figure out where in the world is their Captain Marvel, AKA Norvar, because he left. Which of course, we know why he left, because the idea of him working alongside villains who are pretending to be heroes. You have Norman Osborn appear and wonder where in the world is Ares. Of course, Ares is at his home. And then he wonders about Captain Marvel. But of course, again, we know why Norvar left. So he asks about the Sentry, and the reason why is very huge for Norman Osborn. You have Norman Osborn go outside and talk to the Sentry, where of course he is going to send the Sentry after these rogue Atlanteans that attacked LA earlier. Again, he tells them to only let one live, to show the world that the Avengers were able to capture the people who attacked LA. But when he's talking to the Sentry, he talks to the Sentry in a way that he wants to talk to the Void instead. The Void being the evil being that could wreck the entire Marvel Universe. This is now Norman Osborn hoping to be able to control both the Sentry and the Void, keeping that perfect balance between the two personas but he does send the Sentry on that mission. This is the moment where we get to see the Sentry be the Sentry, where he went to the Atlantis outpost and started killing off people left and right. In his eyes, you can see that this is not really the Sentry in control. This is really more of the Void being in control, where of course, you had the Void doing what Norman Osborn asked, but at the same time, this is going to lead to a downfall for Norman Osborn down the road when it comes to the Sentry in the Void. And we saw that downfall in the Siege event. Now to skip to the end of this book, we see Norman Osborn happy with what the Sentry did and what the news is talking about what the Avengers had done. Except we see him getting mad at Moonstone because he knows that she must have done something that led to Norvar to leave. He wants to know what, but he leaves because something is wrong. Something is beginning to take over him. That is when we see that the Green Goblin is slowly trying to come back and take over once again. And this is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video.